It's still plus politics. Now, the Senate President Ahmed Lawan has stated that President Muhammad Buhari has assented to more bills than all his predecessors did since the Fourth Republic started. Lawan, according to a statement by his spokesman, Ola Awani, applauded Buhari for his cooperation with the legislature to get things done. He said the current National Assembly stood out for, from the previous ones because of its ability to conquer the most complex and critical legislation that had defied passage or assent. Now joining us to discuss this are Christian Wogu and Tunji Abdulhamid, both are legal practitioners. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. It's my pleasure, Miriam. All right. Thank you for having me. Great. I'm going to start with you, Mr. Wogu. Uh, let's look at the... Um, statement by Mr. Lawan and um, the fact that he started by saying that the exec, the, not just the executive, but the legislature has been able to um, push bills to get accent from, assent from Mr. President, um, as opposed to other, you know, republics, whether in fact it's from the fourth republic. So let's take a look at all of these um, republics from the fourth all the way down to now. And how they, what role they've played in bills, and then we'll get to what these bills are for. Yeah, you know, we find that um, the Senate president made an open-ended statement. He didn't really give us the basis, the figures, the facts to um, make such sweeping statement that um, they have done more. Um, than their predecessors or his predecessor. And um, I really think that for a man uh, at that level to make such statement, um, his spokesman, there should be a basis, I mean. And then um, assuming without uh, conceding that um, what he's saying is correct, uh, I really think that is somewhat kind of insensitive. Um, yes, you said you're going to ask questions around that axis, but I could just quickly take a shot at that because for bills to be assented, for him to have assented more bills mm -hmm. than his predecessors, how, how, what does that mean to the student who is at home? Because um, the negotiations that he um, the Senate president should be doing with us either way to make sure the well, I mean, such a statement. What does it What does it mean to to such person? What does it mean to the fact that you buy two hundred naira loaf and you squeeze it and it's uh, What does it mean? What does it mean to the fact that a lot of uh, young people, Nigerians, generally are escaping and dying in the seas and in the deserts? You know, so I think that such statements should be made with a lot of. Um, uh, caution, bearing in mind that I mean, even if it's a political statement, it has to be tied down to some realities. Okay, yes, signed so many bills. To what end? To, to Great. Yes. You, you asked a question that I wanted to ask. But let me just give you some background. Um, he, he made this statement, actually, as a guest lecturer um, at um, a parliamentary, uh, parliamentarian's lecture series. Um, which was facilitated by the National Institute of Legislative and Democratic Studies. But I'll give you figures. Um, he declared that President Buhari had been the most proficient in granting assent to bills as available data on gazetted acts showed that between 2015 and 2021, Buhari had accented uh, to more than 84 bills, the highest since the commencement of the Fourth Republic, 84 bills, which means that this is the highest. But you asked a great question, which is, to what end? And you've also asked about the fact that um, what does this, you know, what does this replicate to? Does it, do these laws become um, enforced to, for the betterment of the average Nigerian? And I think that those questions need to go to, you know, the Senate president. Uh, but you also mentioned something about a political statement. I mean, if this were to be a political statement, why do you think the Senate president was making it? Well, basically to justify, well, I hope you'll pardon me to say this, to justify non-performance. Um, so you think that the, the president has not performed? Yeah, we see, we are looking at um, pragmatic situations. We are looking at realities. We are looking at real life. Yes, you know, some of these persons, with due respect, Miriam, do not know the cost of pure water. 
they don't. Uh, they don't know. The, they, don't, they don't know what um, is. I mean, the fact that if you go to a canteen and you pay five hundred naira, you still come out like you've not eaten. They don't know these things. So that's that's why I say incompetence. I'm not saying as a person, of course, for him to be there. He must have a paid degree, must have a president, where he's coming from. But in terms of reality... Well, uh, just so you know, the, the Senate president has had one of the longest tenures in the National Assembly, 35 years. So he does have a pedigree. Yes, we, we are not cont contesting that. We are looking at deliverable. You know, we are looking at the things that a statement, call it political or whatever, when it's made, people will hail and say, true, that's correct. I just felt it in my bank account. I just felt it when I went to the market. I just felt it when I took a drive. I mean, even to fly now, it's a huge challenge. So these are the things we are looking at. That's why we're saying that such statements should be made, should be tied down to certain realities, mm -hmm. not just be made open and let it just fall into the ground and maybe uh, attract more votes. Mm. Uh, we think we should have a better deal than that. Tunji, uh, let me toss this one to you. Uh, I'd like to quote the Senate president. He said, and I quote, For 20 years, the National Assembly had attempted reforming the petroleum industry without much success. It was first introduced in the 6th Assembly, 2007 to 2011, but failed to scale through. Similar efforts by the 7th Assembly failed to secure concurrence by the Senate, while in the 8th Assembly, the bill was passed but failed to secure presidential assent and he now goes on to say that in the ninth assembly we prioritized the bill in our legislative agenda and worked closely with the executive to uh, secure a passage and assent now this historic achievement of the national assembly means that nigeria now has legal governance regulatory and fiscal frameworks for the petroleum industry that would promote optimal utilization of the country's abundant oil and gas uh, resources. I'd like to really hear your thoughts on this PIB because you and I have had conversations on it. Uh, I, I, I am laughing because uh, I don't know the basis for making that uh, those uh, comparisons and those statements. You see, like uh, my colleague said, it's a, it's a mere political statement. You know, the PIB was passed by president and yeah, since that time that was passed. What has changed? Nothing. What has, well, it, it was passed without even, it was passed Few but after it being passed, there are, there are uh, requests for amendment or for changes or some, some other thing like that. So it shows that it was not properly thought out before it was signed. It just signed for signing sake, for record, for the purpose of we have signed social number of bills for what is happening today. You just want to play that record, statistics that look, social number of bills have been signed by Mr. President. Whether those bills have effect on us or not, it does not matter as far as he's concerned, because that's why he's making those uh, basis. I don't understand the basis of what, what, what he's saying. The, B, the PIBB was passed in, 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 uh, at the 8th Assembly as well. That because of the, 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 fact, the fact that the, the president at, the, at, at, at that time, at the state president at the time, was not in, the, in, in good uh, book of the, of the president. In other words, they were trying to make him look as he's the one blocking the, uh, the progress of the country. Uh, uh, they, they refused to assent to the B, not because the B was not properly done, not because there was no, it was not properly uh, uh, thought, out, thought out, but because the president just wants to show that, look, see, seeing as well as it's coming from the 8th Assembly, led by Dr. Bokar Salaki, I will not assent to it. That was, that was how I see it. So today, making bragging about the uh, number of bids that have been signed by the president, I do not see the basis for it, because I have not seen the effect of those uh, bids that have been signed by the president. In fact, most of these bids that have been signed by the president have, have also been disobeyed by the same president. They have been, they are not being followed. The electoral acts that have just been passed, we, we see what is going on now. Certain things have been done we, 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 without regards to that, to, that, to that law, and the president says nothing. He does, he does nothing. He was not to be there. So as far as I'm concerned, bragging about whether he has signed bill or not is not an issue for me. The issue is that how well has this been helped our situation? How well has it developed our, 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 our circumstances? How well has it changed our circumstances in this country? And look at, look, talking about the uh, bill that's been passed, that is the job of National Assembly, is to pass still and pass law, and uh, into, into law. So if you are passing bill in circumstances that we are here now, because circumstances that we have now is not the same as that we were before now. So things must change and we must, we must improve on what is on ground. And that's what they are doing. They are doing their job as far as concerned. Those job is not even enough to even have effect on us as, 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 as a citizen of this country. So if, I can, if, if, if it's bragging that, look, the bill they passed have changed our life. So I would say, yes, he has the right to brag of that, in that, in that. But he's just bragging without giving us any basis without okay. bragging. As far as I'm concerned, it's just a mere political uh, brag. Le, 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 let me give you some more information. 
again, quoting the Senate president, he said um, that um, it, this bill, the PIB, would enhance social and economic development and promote a conducive investment climate in the industry and foster development of host communities. That's one. Now, he said, without sounding immodest, we have equally concluded work on several other important pieces of legislation uh, that have been signed into law, all of which have potentials uh, to significantly enhance various aspects of our national lives. And then he goes further to say, the Finance Act of 2020 successfully amended um, 17 key aspects of the extant laws, including seven existing tax laws. Uh, he also said the CM CAMA 2020 Act also represents a landmark achievement, representing the first time in 30 years uh, that this law has been updated. Other bills of great economic significance uh, that have been passed by the National Assembly and awaiting presidential assent include the Public Procurement Act of 20, 20, 2007, um, recovery of public property bill and the amendment of assets management corporation act among others so you're talking about the fact that these things may not have an effect on you know the our daily lives but he's also making a case that these bills have potential in his words i'm, I'm using his words to change you know our national life okay, yeah. go ahead very yeah, young potential we have to talk about potential when the bill has been passed for about many months ago that the, the pib has been passed since uh, 2000 and uh, 2019 or 20 or 21 yes we have not seen the effect of that bill in fact i'm aware that there are about two or three uh two amendments have been have been proposed to for regarding the the the, the bill in fact two, some month, two months after, after the parade of the bill certain things were being put forward certain things were not know they were not in other words it was just signed for tiny thing the president just want to sign it just for record because you can see, if you see the letter that was signed, signed that it was signed when it was not even properly done. When the president even agreed that this bill is not proper, they are signing just for signing sake. What, 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 what is that? The, the PIDB, as far as I'm concerned, has not seen the effect of it. Has not seen the difference between the what we have, to, what, what we used to have in terms of uh, NMPC and what we have today. I have not seen any difference between them, whether it's limited liability or not. I have not been able to see the difference between the two. You see, mm. they are still operating the same way. We are still doing the same thing. So as far as I'm concerned. The bill, yes, it is the duty of the job. The, 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 the president signing a bill into law is not a big deal. That is the job. He okay. must do it. That is what you need to do. So okay. if you sign a bill into law, yeah, you are doing your job. So I don't have to praise you for that. Do your job and then that's why that's why you are being paid for. That's why you are, why you are there. So the what I'm after is that if he's telling me that those will have been signed into law are now giving us more joy, and now giving more security to us, and now giving us more giving us more welfare, and now giving us more the, 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 the relaxation of mind. Then I would say, yes, he's talking. The as far as I'm concerned today, he's just making statements that are without mm -hmm. any out of uh, benefit to me, as far as I'm concerned. Mr. Wogo, let me come to you. Um, the issue of our budget, which also translates into whether we're asking for infrastructural developments, good road networks, power, energy, um, is something that he also talks about. He talks about the fact that the Ninth Assembly has also successfully pushed for a return to the January to December budget cycle which was, according to him, made possible in collaboration between the president and members of the executive who have since 2019 ensured early preparation and presentation of this budget. So I would like to hear your thoughts on that. You know, Miriam, um, the fact that a, a budget should run from January to December is not something that anybody in office should um, say that it's an achievement. But it's something we had struggled with over the years. No. Yes, if we had trouble with it, it's like saying, like everybody says, when it's an election campaign, I'll give you water, I'll give you all you know, these basic things. In fact, I will even give you human rights, which is fundamental to ex existing. See, the point is this. Whether the budget is running, of course, it has to run from January to December. But the point is, the budget, the, issue, the major issue of budget in Nigeria is non-performance. You know, you find at the end of the, I mean, sometime even before the end of the budget tenure, you hear that there is a, a, a bill now for supplementary budget, an additional budget. The other one that just passed, somebody is saying it only performed 10%, 25%. You know, these are challenges that we need to deal with. But, uh, quick question, because we're out of time. We, we complain about these budget cycles and, and non-performance. 
who's challenging it? Apart from Serap, kudos to Serap. They are always filing suits and asking questions. But where are the other people? Who's pushing to ask the questions? Where does the money go? If it's only performed 10%, what happened to the rest of the 90%? We're not asking these questions. And these guys are coming back to ask for your vote. So really, should we just be talking about non-performance? William, non we should be asking the question, I tell you, is the media is the press. You know, sometimes I feel that um, the media should really... The press, the press is asking those questions, but is it just the press that is being no, but essentially, in the um, essentially, let's not even begin to label them. The real person that should determine how the budget goes and makes sure it performs is the commander-in-chief, is the president, is the governor, is the local government chairman. Those are the people that we have given our trust, our mandate, you know, to deal with our money. It's all of those things are our money. You know, so if they are not doing it, they are in default and in a huge default for that matter. Who's going to hold them to account? EFCC. If only EFCC can also live up to its bill. We can really get it right in this country. Yeah. Well, I want to say thank you, gentlemen, because we are out of time. Christian Wogu and Tunji Abdulhamid are both legal practitioners. Thank you, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation and talking for development. Well, that's all we have for you tonight on PLOS Politics. To round up today's show, Nigerians tell us what they think about the APC's 100 million Naira nomination forms. And that's on Street Views. I am Mary Anna Cohn. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 p.m. talking for development. Have a good evening. As a people, we, we, these are things that we need to take into consideration when making our choice of a party to support or the candidates to support because there is consequence to such things being put in place. You don't expect someone that, is, that pays a huge price um, and buys from his pocket to actually then uh, not want to recoup that money. Where do they get such money from to buy just a form where it's not guaranteed you're going to win? So as citizens, we need to be watchful of that and make our decisions. This is not ideal. Especially if you look at what's going on in the country now, 100 million is a lot of money. I won't use the word absorb, but it's a lot of money. And the consideration is for me is what's the basis? How did you come about 100 million? I think the other parties are doing 40 million, 35. Even 10 million is a lot of money, given the fact that we're looking for a leader now who doesn't necessarily have to have all the way to do financially, but a leader who knows what it is that the country needs or is expects of him. They are making the money for the party. The party belongs to the, the money belongs to the party. So you can never say maybe it's wrong or it's right. Because even though they're trying to say it's, it's a uh, trillion. If you have the power, you, you, do, you, you do it, you pay it. It doesn't make any sense at all. That's too much. At least there have been like 50,000 at, at least. Actually, that's too much. 100 million, no. 100 million, 100,000, I don't understand. 100 million, ah, no, that's too much. Now it's too much. No. If a, a Nigerian, an individual, will bring out 100 million from his purse to buy for form to run for the presidency, meaning that he has trillions of naira in his account, therefore EFCC is supposed to go there and find out what is working. If you happen to buy the form too, what are you going there to do? You must bring your money back, put your interest before you think of others. That's ridiculous. In fact, when I heard the news and I'm wondering, where do they want like genuine people to actually get this kind of money? People that can afford it are people that are actually stealing. The other time, um, a certain man did a burial and EFCC invited him over to probe him because of the money he spent for the burial. So EFC should also invite these ones that are able to buy these forms and then probe them and ask them where they got that money from because you can't tell me it's it's not um, it's genuine. Even if it's genuine, when they entered now, they will want to steal and get back that money.